morning, good evening, my name is Charles Ogle. Today, I'll be discussing Remember the Titans. I'll be discussing a little bit about Coach Boone, and about Coach Yost, which I hope I get his name right. I've been kind of working on this for a while, so I can perfect it. I'm gonna talk about their leadership styles, some followership styles from Coach Yost. I'm gonna talk about what I would incorporate and what I wouldn't incorporate in their leadership styles based on the mood. But before I progress on and I talk to you about my opinions on these set individuals, first thing to say is during that time in the movie, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of bad stuff going on. And that movie really brought home and brought to light what was going on in America at the time and the struggle that was there and the un inequality that was all over America. But by the end of the movie, it all came together. It all came together and it all worked its way out. First things first, Coach Boone. He was a very autocratic leader. My way or the highway. You had to either catch up to him or he'd leave you in the dust. Now, most modern coaches nowadays aren't like that. I played football growing up. I'll let you know. There was a fine line coaches would go to, but they wouldn't go past it. Coach Boone, he would go full speed all the time, no holds barred. That's just how he was. Now, Coach Yost, well, Coach Yost to me, he had a real strong sense of laissez-faire. Like, I'm just gonna sit back and let Coach Boone do everything. Well, in the scene that I'm gonna discuss, when Coach Yost finally came to light and showed his true colors and showed that he could be a leader, he could listen to Coach Boone and say what needs to be said to get something fixed. First thing to discuss is styles. We're gonna discuss, discuss the two styles that emulate what I want to be and what I don't want to be based off the movie. We're gonna talk about how the two styles conflict. And then we're also gonna talk about, well, what they could have done earlier in the movie to maybe cut out that middleman, cut out that conflict that was in the middle between the both of them so they could come together and get the team on the same page. Overall, it seemed like there wasn't a whole lot of teamwork off the bat. There was a massive divide in the team. But as the season progressed, as they started knowing each other, as they started trusting each other, the teamwork came along with it. And that is what I feel was the culmination of the movie, was the teamwork finally came together they forgot all the bad stuff. They forgot all everything going around. They just want to get on the football field and play some football. Coach Yost, to me, he was a passive follower. And maybe felt due to the fact that Coach Boone was such an autocratic leader, his opinion didn't matter. Well, it did matter. He just never really, I felt, found the foot still to push forward to let Coach Boone know, hey, I don't like that. Whoa. We shouldn't talk like that. He very commonly sat idle and he didn't say much. Due to this, well, to me, that's not something you should be. You don't need to sit idle all the time and let somebody dictate all the time and be that yes leader. Or yes, please, I'll do this. Or yes, I'll do that. Or yes, I'll do this. You have to sometimes step down and defend the line and defend what you feel is best in your heart. But at the end of the day, Boone needs to mellow out and understand that Yost was trying to do what was best for the team in the new style Boone was imp imp implementing. Well, it was drastic. They brought players in that weren't welcome with open arms. Again, going back to what was going on in America at the current time, it wasn't fair stuff that was going on, I don't want my children ever to see. 
The best scene to discuss is when they butted heads and when their two styles finally conflicted, but it conflicted in a good way. It conflicted in the way of progress. They met the middle ground, they knew what they needed to do, and they moved forward from it. Coach Boone let his guard down a little bit, and Coach Yost came in there and did what he was supposed to do. He was a follower. He followed the leader into war on that football field. In a pivotal regional championship game, when Coach Yost finally stood up for the team and showed he could be a leader too, they were pulling Coach Boone away because they knew he was gonna get ejected or something bad was gonna happen. He didn't conform to the norm. And he wasn't that yes person, I'm gonna see something bad, obviously, flagrantly, happening in front of me, and I'm not gonna say a darn thing about it. He stepped up because he knew there was something wrong, and there was some drastic inequality being done. Those referees were purposely making those flags so that team, the Titans, wouldn't win. I feel like he even put his job on the line because he made the statement that before God, he would see them all in jail. That's a pretty bold statement from an assistant coach, not a head coach. He made them remember that night and he made them remember to never forget playing the Titans that night. That was a very, very critical part of that movie to me. There were some racial differences going on at that time. There was a lot to overcome. There was a lot to work on because once they opened that door and opened the floodgate for what America, well, at the time, didn't welcome with open arms, it was gonna meet a very, very, very rough road. The fact that era portrayed and how accurate it portrayed the history, it's one of my overall favorite movies I've ever seen and ever watched. And that says something because, well, I love movies. I'm the kind of person that has a movie collection in my room because I don't rely on internet all the time. So if I wanna go to that Remember the Titans, grab it, stick in my DVD player, I can't, because it's on my shelf, and it's a great, great movie. The coaches, both of them, had to come together in that era and to make something happen. The leadership style of Boom, autocratic, and Yost, which, as I said, kind of a laws affair, overall worked in the end. They did come together on what they were passionate about, and they led the Titans to greatness. Overall, the movie is about the strife of America, what was going on in America, and honestly, it's what needed to be changed. It's very good, accurate representation on what was going on at that time, how a team came together in that time, how they had two coaches that were on the opposite wavelengths of leadership and followership eventually worked its way out to work out a successful team. Those two coaches were amazing coaches. Yes, they had two different kinds of leadership styles. Yes, they were odd at times, but they came together for the greatness of the team to remember the Titans. Again, my name is Charles Overall. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I hope everyone's having a good week. I know everybody got off turkey week and they probably still had a turkey in the belly. <laughs>